That's right, my friends. While everybody is worried about the possibility of facing something with a 99% survival rate, the real pandemic is just beginning. What do I mean by that? Hopefully you have watched the video I made a couple of months ago about why I predict food shortages are coming. Now, let us review. In there, which was two months ago, it was in June, I think, in there I predicted that there, or I foresaw that there will be price increase on so many things and that we're going to see that more and more. That's going to become part of our normal day-to-day -day life. The price of everything is going up. Well, we are seeing that. Even the price of those buckets that I, in that video, 20 foods to stock up on, at, uh, at the time of making that, which was just like 45 days ago or something, a month and a half, those buckets were $4.99. They are now $7.99. The exact same buckets. Yes. This is happening across the board. Uh, let me know in the comments. Where are you seeing? What kind of things have you seen? Price increase. Because that's what shortages first look like. It doesn't look like you might have images in your mind of a movie or something like that where, ah, where there's no food and everybody's running, running to the store and, and driving through the walls and all that stuff. You know, chaos. That's very late stage food shortages, okay? We're, we're a ways away from that. But in the beginning, it just looks like, because of supply and demand, that the supply has gone down, so the price is going up. Okay, the price across the board. And they're also going to be putting in more and more limits on what you can get. We're already seeing this at Costco, at Kroger's, at Myers, so many places already. People are telling me all the time now that of things that they are seeing. Okay, have you seen limits? Have you seen price increases on stuff? Look at the price of beef. Even though I don't eat that much meat, and I never buy it, but to those that do buy it, uh, the price has gone through the roof. Yes. So <laughs> not only are, is that coming into fruition, uh, food shortages aspect, but the supply chain disruptions. Now in that video, two months ago, I said, look up what is happening with the shipping containers and the shipping industry. All right. Now here we are. Let us look, unless you've been living under a rock or something, no doubt you are aware that in the port of Los Angeles, there are a hundred, give or take a hundred shipping containers or uh, um, shipping vessels that are waiting to be unloaded. All right. Now each one of these, okay, each one of these vessels contains between 10 and 21,000. Let me, let me make that uh, Hold on. I got to make sure just to make sure that I am because that just seems unbelievable, but I do remember that being true. Yes. Depending on the size of the container ship, most cargo vessels hold anywhere between 10,000 to 21,000 shipping containers. Think of, think of how much goods is on that. All right. Now, if you're someone like me, you go, why is this happening? Okay, because these guys, these ports have been functioning day and night, 24-7, for years, for decades, okay, pretty much smoothly. Why all of a sudden? And they go, oh, well, it's just, so someone like me will look up that reason uh, and say, okay, why is that happening? The official reason given is that there's supply shortages. We just can't find anyone to work. Nobody wants to work. Mm, okay, well then, uh, so I look up, so what is the average salary for a uh, longshoreman in Long Beach, which is where this port is that I'm talking about. Uh, and anyone can do this, just Google it. Um, how much does a longshoreman make in California, in the Long Beach? So anywhere between, uh, oops, yes, uh, anywhere between 47,000 and 87,000 per year, okay? So that means that the average salary of someone unloading the ships at one of these ports is $64,800 a year. That doesn't include massive opportunity for overtime and the benefits, all these other things that come with it. So I'm sorry, there's no way that you can't find people to work for that kind of price. 
It's not like we're talking about staffing McDonald's or something like that, or Walmart's. I mean, this is a considerable sum. So then you look at, uh, is this happening elsewhere? Yes, this is happening elsewhere in Anchorage, Alaska, for some reason. Why is there shipping a bottlenecks in Alaska? Okay, because this is all manufactured. It is a manufactured, it is part of a manufactured demolition of the world economy. This is exactly what we are seeing, my friends, make no mistake. That in order to implement the new, you have to demolish the old. All right. Now, this brings us to our third and most impactful of the things. So we had um, food shortages and then supply chain disruptions. Now we have the mother of them all, energy. Okay. Meaning oil, coal, and gas, natural gas. Now, if you want to just take a look around and see <laughs> see that our entire civilization is built upon oil. We discovered stored energy from the sun because it's all energy from the sun, everything here. And we discovered deposits of it from a time long, long ago, an ancient geological period. And we have tapped into that very concentrated solar energy in the form of this oil and we have built an entire civilization around it to the point that without oil everything you know about the the modern world will come to a grinding halt grinding halt oil is king okay transportation without it nothing is moving trains planes buses automobiles all that stop Right now, none of it's moving. Try to move that 4,000 pound hunk of iron that is in your driveway without gas, without oil. No, it would take a team of horses days to move it to the store and back. Okay, so we're in a predicament because oil is in everything. It, 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 it's the, the lifeblood of everything that we do. So what else? Food production. Many people are not aware of this, but we, meaning the Western civilization and the world now, with its modern industrial agricultural practices over the past 50 years, that's all it's taken, we have killed the soil. How, most people think, how does that happen? S soil, soil. No, soil is actually very much alive. Soil is full of billions and trillions of microorganisms, and it is a complex web of relationships that the microorganisms in the soil have with the plants and the roots. And without them, without the microorganisms, the plants cannot absorb anything. Okay, I can explain this later if you would like. Let me know, do you wanna know about the soil food web? Do you wanna know about healthy soil and why we've killed the soil and what, what, we, what we can do about it? So, um, most people are not aware that We've killed the soil now, and so for that reason, we have to continue dumping petroleum-based chemicals on the land and on our food supply. Because without it, uh, th there's nothing left in the soil. For years, we've just taken and taken and taken without replenishing anything and then killing the microorganisms because all the petroleum-based fertilizers wipe out. The, they starve them of their natural food, the, or the microorganisms, and they also just straight kill them. All the pesticides, all of this is petroleum-based. Without that, we will not be able to grow enough food for people to survive. Okay, yes, my garden in the back and at the temple and all the gardens that I'm a part of, where I'm growing 50, 60 percent, 70 percent of my own sustenance, there's zero chemicals, of course. But I'm talking ag chem, the big chem, anything that you get from the store. Okay, um, I'm not going to go too deep into that right now at the moment. But um, also in food preservation, all of our oil is in all of our preservatives. Without it, the food cannot keep for weeks and months like it does. It's in all of our packaging. Without it, we don't have any packaging for things. It's in our building materials. It's in our medicines. So many medicines are petroleum based. My friends, once you start realizing this, 
it's horrifying to see how in the grips uh, of oil we are. It's everywhere around us. Without it, our whole way of life immediately disintegrates. Okay? So therefore, one would be wise to keep an eye on the price of oil and the availability of oil. Now, not only has oil and coal gone, if, if you look at the graphs, which I have, I'm not going to put them on this video because I want you, I would like you to do the research yourself. Just look at the price of coal, how it's gone like this. The graph goes like this, it goes like that, okay, up, like 120% up in the past year alone, okay, and look at the price of oil, all right, of the crude oil, all of it's going up and up and up. Now, price is one thing, okay? But availability is the ultimate thing. So now go to worldometer, worldometer.com. And they give numbers based on the latest science and latest figures on all different kinds of things. But look up how much oil we have left. At the current and at the current rate of consumption, how many years at the current rate of consumption left do we have of oil? Pause this and do that now. Okay, you're back. Okay, good. That's right. 47 years left of proven oil reserves at the current rate of consumption. My friends, we are running out of the lifeblood. <laughs> and so. This begs the question, what can we do? Well, I can tell you what we have to do, one way or the other it's going to happen, is a total radical transformation of our entire civilization. Everything that sustains us, the way we live has to change, the way we eat has to change, the way we work has to change. Our houses have to be, they, they can no longer be built so deeply energy intensive. They have to be built with more natural principles of using the earth, making earth berm type houses like our ancestors used to do, that virtually eliminates heating and cooling cost. We have to uh, restructure the way that we work. We cannot be commuting all the way across town every single day. We cannot be driving miles and miles and miles all the time. What if there's no more gas? Then what? How are you going to get to work? Or what, what happens when gas is $10 a gallon, which will definitely happen. There's no doubt. So what happens then? You're just going to keep driving and driving everywhere and driving just to pay for the driving? Okay, we have, to, we have to restructure the way that we eat. This is perhaps the most important thing. We have to, we have to come to terms with what we've done and we have to um, remediate the soil. We have to reinvigorate. We have to rehabilitate the soil. We have to stop dumping chemical, petroleum-based chemicals on it multiple times every year, poisoning the land and killing the soil for future generations. We have to stop this immediately. And we have to take, retake up the ways of our ancestors. Now, this is not going to be able to sustain 8 billion or 10 billion or 15 billion people. That's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So, what we need is an absolute, from the ground up, a total transformation of our civilization. We could say a total reset of our society. Such a great reset that we could call it the great reset. Do you understand? Do you understand? Now, this is not by choice. This is going to be by absolute necessity, but this is what is coming. And it can happen in a number of ways. It could happen in the way that it is happening now, currently, as we speak, and that it will continue to happen unless we do something to intervene. And this is the way of absolute centralization. All control of the resources, the remaining resources, is going to be more and more centralized. All the control over the money system, which will become digital, completely digital, that's where we're moving, make no mistake, all of that will be centrally controlled. Excuse me. 
uh, our food production will be centrally controlled. Who gets to eat, therefore, and who doesn't get to eat will be centrally controlled. Now, the sooner that you can come to terms with this, the better it's going to be, all right? The, the most important thing that you or your loved ones or whoever you're coming in contact with, once they begin to grasp the enormity of what is happening, they will be in denial. No doubt, they will be in denial. Cognitive dissonance, look that up. Okay, it, that will happen. They'll say, no, no, no. Because it is very difficult for people to accept the fact that they have been hustled, that they have been lied to, that they have been taken for a fool. It's, it's near, it can be nearly impossible for people to admit this because that means that everything that they have thought about reality has been a lie. And that's very difficult for many people to digest. Some of us have begun to digest this though, of course. So, it's only once you finally stop running from this and say, okay, this is what's happening. It's, everything is about to change. And that's okay. So, with clear vision and an open heart, we can prevail. And how are we going to prevail? By decentralizing everything. Everything. We have to decentralize the production of food. This is the most important, my friends. You have to understand this. Without food, oh my God, everything will get tribal real fast. All right. I've been to countries where there's not enough to eat. I've been to places where there's not enough to eat. And it all depends upon who has the food. So we have to decentralize this. You have to be growing your own food, okay? So I'm going to be making more videos on this, especially uh, I'll, I'll do some indoor winter gardening videos. I know people have said that they want. There's also going to be some in the spring about everything you need to know to be growing your own sustenance. Okay, so we have to get on board with growing your food. Get a stock of food. I know it sounds like a broken record. I'm just saying the same things because this is important, my friends. I see this coming. So... Let me know in the comments, what do you see coming? What kind of things have you experienced? Have you experienced uh, price increases or shortages? Or what, what are some ways that we can decentralize the power? Because this is only going to work for them. This great reset is only going to work in their favor if we continue to acquiesce to our own enslavement. But if we stop complying to our own enslavement and we say no it's not going to go this way there is going to be a great reset but it's going to be a greater reset and it's going to be on our terms okay my friends and one more thing my friends uh the next video is going to be one about traveling we're going to start doing that again so uh go back and watch the ones uh, about traveling with the number in the corner. Those are the ones about traveling. And I'm going to be pretty much putting out two videos a week this whole winter. Uh, one will be traveling video on Saturdays. And one will be a uh, video about something else like the one you just watched. So, yeah. Garden's doing awesome, man.